This is a lot of fun, I may be black and blue. Before the season's done, if I had chicken jokes, we're telling everyone that it was something to me. Very interesting, blue, blue, black and blue. We never get a fight, we never hold a grudge, we put each in the way. We give a little nudge, we let it all hang out, and yet we come to judge, cause it's a socket to me. Very interesting, blue, blue, black and blue. common cabbage, and the alligator is just a quack. So says the Maharishi. <laughs> it isn't that I wanted to work for the CIA, but I still have family in Washington. It is a twilight zone, it must be outer space, and lovely downtown Burbank is the place of that arena's crack, and not around the block, and everybody says not no. I think of men. 
My medicine one week running, then skip a week. Hey man, you think I'm so jolted and married in a bathtub? Groovy! 
Yeah. It was a double ring ceremony. <laughs> downtown Burbank. Due to lack of interest, tomorrow will be canceled. Fairweather, North Dakota. Due to the recent tornado, citizens of Fairweather, North Dakota have decided to change the name of their town. It will now be called Fairweather, South Dakota. <laughs> Boston, Massachusetts. Fred Fielding discussed a new way to teach the facts of life to children. Mr. Fielding, a skywriter by profession, revealed all to his son today and was immediately arrested upon landing. <laughs> Business news. Today, Zippo Lighters merged with Camp Town Racetrack. New company to be called Zippity Doodah. <laughs> San Diego, California. Today marks the birthday of Emil Drake, the man who invented the first concrete canoe. Emil would be 32 today. <laughs> ball now at the news of the future. Washington, D.C., 2015. Former President Bill Clinton announced today that he intends to leave his brain to the science department at Georgetown University. In gratitude, Georgetown officials said they intend to do everything possible to keep Mr. Clinton alive. <laughs> Dublin, 2025. With marriage in the church recently sanctioned, the Archbishop and his lovely bride, Sister Mary Catherine, said, this time it's for peace. <laughs> the nation's capital, 2010. Newly appointed FCC Chairman Howard Stern testified before Congress on the state of decency in the television media. According to his statements, there are approximately seven television programs that are free of profanity and scantily clad women. He further stated that he vows to do any, everything possible to get rid of those shows off of the air. <laughs> Washington, D.C., 2006. 
While leaving her favorite bar, Smith Point, Jenna Bush suffered a broken ankle when her left leg gave right out from under her. She immediately launched a lawsuit against her mother and father charging faulty production. <laughs> Time now for a lap in news feature. With the miracle of surgical transplants now a reality, the Roan and Martin Report is proud to present to you the world's first totally reconstituted human. Won't you sign in, please? So, you are the first person made of entirely spare parts? That's right. My left ear arm belonged to a CIA member and my right to an FBI member. How does it work out? Not too well because my left hand never knows what my right hand is doing. <laughs> that could be confusing. Also, this kneecap is Egyptian and this one is Jewish. Is that a problem? Only when I cross my leg. <laughs> well, you look just great. I feel great too. The only problem is, when I have an upset stomach, it takes the entire UN to settle. Does this mean that your entire anatomy is made up of foreigners? No, my, just my liver, my kidneys, and my blood. My heart belongs to daddy. I see. Well, it's been nice talking to you. May I shake your hand? Sure, it's not mine anyway. <laughs> On returning to Moscow from their honeymoon, the Tsar and his bride announced their immediate separation. They refused to discuss the matter, but it was noted that he called her Catherine the Great, while she called him Ivan the Terrible. 1878. Word has just been received that General Custer is completely surrounded by hostile Indians. His last comment to K reads, Who said wrong? Have more fun. And now, back to the present, for a look at the European scene. Take it away, Switzerland! Bill Morgan here, 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 here. Good news for skiers, skiers, skiers. More snow for the weekend, and, 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 help. <laughs> oh, that's all for now, now. Well, thanks, Bill, Bill, Bill. And now, here's Dan, 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 Dan. All right, Dan, you ready for this one? You bet your sweet pippy I am. <laughs> We're going to go back to Elizabethan England in the times of Sir Walter Raleigh, where he just returned with his two great inventions, or discoveries, actually, tobacco and corn. Man, that's coffee. Well, that about wraps up this part of the show. There's still three more hours left, so you can still phone in your contributions. Hey, what's that all about? Hey, I figured we can make a buck or two. Why not? The correct time is now exactly 87 degrees and rising. And now for this week's top committee. Can I have a card up? Yes. Can I have a card up? Yes. Can I have a card yes. up? Yes. I think all this psychiatry stuff is ridiculous. If parents treat their kids right, there'd be no need for psychiatrists. My parents, for instance, always made me feel like an important part of the family. Even though they had very little education, and only in the small grocery store, they taught me to accept myself for what I am, a carrot. <laughs> That's the way the care rocks. That's the way the egg plants. That's the way the key pops. That's the way the cube covers. That's 
the way the toad stools. <laughs> That's the way the artist chokes. That's the way they call it flowers. That's the way the asparagus tips. That's the way the cabbage heads. That's the way the mush grooms. That's the way the sweet pea. <laughs> The driver who left his car door open in our parking lot, please pick up his 1987 three-door sedan. <laughs> also, where's the man who left his 1955 Green Rolls Royce convertible, license plate CIA 42388, with our parking lot attendant? Oh, oh, yeah. oh uh, a little bad news for you, sir. We don't have a parking lot attendant. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Those were a few local announcements. And now for some special advertisements. Take it away, advertising department. Please. I mean, you're a poor housekeeper and I was a 
Look, I mean, I'm afraid to bring my friends home. Why don't you just do the goofy thing and leave me? There, there, I feel so much better. Thank you for listening, Margaret. I'll be home at 6 o'clock today. <laughs> Come to that portion of the show we like to call New Talent Time. Oh, that gives me heartburn. Have you got a goodie for us tonight? Oh, I do. He's been on the show before. Clint Eastwood? No, no, no. Pietro Rosmenko. The guy from the Iron Curtain. That's the one. I love him. Everybody loves him. Ladies and gentlemen, please help out with a warm welcome straight from Russia, Mr. Pietro Rosmenko. Have you been, man? Happy Daddy, my brother. Come on from here. Your brother's here? Happy Daddy, you see brother. Are you working with your brother? You see, I bring brother out. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, what a surprise. His brother's here too. Round of applause for the Rosemako twins. We're going to go overseas, straight to India, to see Lapton's very own Krishna Guru. Bring it up. Which is 
there. And ladies and gentlemen, before you turn in your voting cards, make sure you flip that over and write your measurements on the back. You never know when the fickle finger of fate will pick you out of that audience and bring you up on this very stage. And good night, Michael Jackson, wherever you are. <laughs> our public service pollsters, the question most asked this week is, who is the fattest man in the world? The fattest man in the world is Mr. Raymond LeGrand, who weighs 912 pounds and lives in Minneapolis and pays off. Well. <laughs> <laughs> in answer to our second most asked question of the week, the strangest invention on file is a self-timed shoelace invented by Mr. Raymond LeGrand of Minneapolis and St. Paul. Don't stop it to me now, man. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. The judge is coming, so look alive. Because he can give you one to five. <laughs> judge, can you accept this box of candy as you're talking about gratitude? One, and have everyone say it. Here comes the five. No, 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 no.
Hey, wait. Maybe we get her to fill in for him. <laughs> so long, darling. Where did you hide the secret set of books? <laughs> once said, Anne Hathaway about her, happens she? <laughs> I just got a new dog. Fitz? No, but he drew us a lot. Hey, I meant to ask 
asked you uh, last weekend, did you have fun with those Siamese twins? Yeah! And no. <laughs> Your cops don't carry guns, do they? No, just crutches! <laughs> Come on, man. Here goes the judge. Here goes the judge. Here goes the judge. Here goes the judge. Here comes the intermission. Ah! Ah! Gentlemen, before we begin the second half of laughing tonight, we'd like to remind you all of tonight's celebrity jackpot question. Tonight's celebrity jackpot question is, what did Napoleon really mean when he said, not tonight, Josephine? <laughs> and now, from the top of the Eiffel Tower, here in beautiful downtown Burbank, here they are, the slightly undercooked Dan Rowan and the dangerously high carbonated Dick Martin! Thank 
Yes, up until the time I was drafted. <laughs> Remember the words of the captain of the Titanic. The family that prays together, stays together. You sleep on bed of nails is not but a lazy part yet. <laughs>
quite so busy. <laughs> It may seem a bit strange, but I left a pair of shoes here to get fixed back before I went to the war in uh, 1969. You don't happen to have them, do you? Uh, let me check. Yes, sir, we have your shoes, but it won't be ready for Friday. <laughs> I just said he was invisible. Well, Dan, let's bring him out. Well, you will. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Harold Knopf, the world's first invisible man. I thought you said he's invisible. I am invisible. But I can see you standing right there. No, you can't. So, Mr. Knopf, how long have you been invisible? And you haven't seen yourself since? Not seen. That's amazing. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show. Over here. It's a natural mistake. But I can't see it. Here comes the judge! Here comes the judge! Here comes the judge! <laughs> Next! Do you have anything to say? 
pay on your behalf? No, sir. I gave every cent I had to the jury.
right. But he's coming down on his left. But the best man always stands on the right. Then why did he come on his left? Because he's left-handed, that's why. Well, I still think it's his father's fault. If he had brought you down on the other side... Oh, Charles, then you would have married my father. No. I mean, if he had come down on Arnold's right... Then Arnold would have married my father. Well, then why didn't he say something? Idiot. He would have said he's here. He is here. Arnold! Hello, Margaret. Aren't you going to say something? Yes, of course. Congratulations. Is that all? No. I hope you both be very happy. So listen, Harry, how are you going to explain this to your wife? <laughs> Annie Goose and Fanny Farmer adopted little orphan Annie, she'd be little orphan Annie Granny Fanny. <laughs> hey Dick, I meant to tell you, that's a great tie you're wearing. Oh, thanks. It's from a lady. Oh yeah? Which one? The one I'm wearing around my neck. I'm talking about the lady. The one I was wearing around my neck last night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Back today for a look at the sermonette. 
I'm very nervous. I've never done a TV sermon before. Never mind. We have the Lord's Prayer on two parts. Mrs. Kemp, I do believe the time for the program should be changed. Wednesday night is not a good night for religion. It should be on Sundays. What? In the last next month? <laughs> Monk? Who's Monk? Is he a, a Franciscan brother? I'm sorry, those will never do. What's the matter? I refuse to say that the Gospels are written by Matthew, Mark, Cool Hand, Luke, and John. <laughs> Dollin on 
I'm interesting. So I took painting lessons. Now I'm a dull and uninteresting painter. <laughs> Have you ever seen a duck? That's not a chicken joke, is it? No, it's a duck joke, dummy. It's a dumb duck joke. <laughs> What's purple and hum? What? An electric ring. Well, why does it hum? Because it doesn't know the word.
Along with Mike, we have another fantastic kid who helped out as well, took charge of the curtain, and most of all took charge of us by ordering us around. Marcus Bowen, assistant <laughs> program. She is by far the best thing that's ever happened to this theater department. She's the stage manager, Lauren Gilbert. I, I would be remiss to not mention the person who I always you know, make sure that she does the student faculty play every once in a while. And she's great for this school and we love her to death. Miss Vicki Ferris. Angela, Mike, and Andrew, crew up here. Back. Woo!